Hey there, welcome back. I'm so excited to chat with you today about how to continue to level up your client experience so that you can stand out in your market. Today, I'm gonna be talking about what the word luxury means as a photographer. Sometimes we're not sure how we can craft that white glove experience when the majority of our work feels quite manual and taking photos, but there is actually a very clear way that we can create that high touch, amazing client experience so that we can coin our businesses as luxury. When I think of luxury, I think about something that stands out amongst the crowd. It's gonna be, whether it's a business or a tangible product, something that's elevated, that's different, that offers an amazing experience. So when we think about how we can make our own businesses luxury, we wanna think about what we experience as consumers in order to provide that experience for our clients. Whether you're photographing an intimate backyard wedding or a luxury grand affair at a beautiful ballroom hotel, it doesn't matter. The location doesn't matter. The keys to establishing your brand as luxury aren't just in the photos themselves. The major touch points you need to consider live within the experiences that you're providing for your clients. From the moment they contact you through your website, DM or via phone, all the way through to the image delivery, whether that's in person or whether they're viewing the images digitally, you want every single element of that to contribute to that elevated experience. Utilizing the strategies in this video will make you the go-to photographer in your market. First, we're gonna talk about what to wear. This is one of the bullet points that we're gonna be discussing in this video, but I do have an entire video with images dedicated to what to wear. But to give you a brief synopsis, first and foremost, you wanna dress professionally. Well, what does that mean? It means no jeans. You wanna show that you appreciate and care for their formal event. If you're showing up dressed in blue jeans or something that's not professional, you give off a different vibe. I cannot believe how many people have complimented us on attire that has nothing to do with the photos, but because we are visually a part of the wedding and a lot of times front and center with the client, you wanna dress professionally so that you're representing them well and showing the respect that you feel not just towards them, but towards the event as a whole. We typically wear all black. The reason for that is because we want to blend in. If we're in a sea of tuxedos or suits and formal attire, wearing all black for us doesn't allow the light to reflect off of our attire, it's not patterned, and so we sort of just blend in. However, the one caveat to that is if we're photographing somewhere like a beach wedding, we wouldn't necessarily wanna wear black because then we would probably stand out in that beach scene. So a lot of our weddings are here in the city. We photograph in churches, we photograph in ballrooms, we do photograph at private estates, but we do typically wear black so that we blend in. I recommend closed toe shoes for multiple reasons. Number one, they look good, whether it's a booty, a slide, or an enclosed back shoe. I love the idea of a closed toe shoe because it's a little bit more formal. Secondly, it's gonna protect your feet on the dance floor. When we photograph receptions, we really get in the mix. We are in there taking pictures, and so there's heels. We don't want anyone stepping on our toes, and so that is just an added perk to wearing a closed toe shoe. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is how you present yourself. What you say, what you don't say, your disposition and your energy. All of these things contribute to your ability to allow others to perceive you as luxury and to create a luxury experience for your client. First and foremost, when you arrive to the wedding day, arrive early and introduce yourself. When we get there, we introduce ourselves to the client. We try to get to know who the bridesmaids are, who the mother of the bride is. We wanna know who's in the room. If it's a same-sex wedding and there's two grooms, we wanna to get to know who their partner is, who their brother is, who is in the room with our client. We want everyone to feel comfortable, we wanna know who they are, and we want to create rapport with them. 
Oftentimes, when we are speaking about referrals, sometimes the client doesn't even have to recommend us verbally because the future client is in the room. You wouldn't believe how many times we photographed a wedding and then a few years down the road, we photograph her sister or maybe a bridesmaid or maybe a brother-in-law of the bride. You never know who is watching you work on a wedding day and so you always wanna put your best foot forward and have that amazing rapport with those who are in the room. This is something that Brad and I, my husband, who is my second shooter, feel very strongly about. When we're at a wedding, one thing that we do not do is we do not talk about another wedding. We want our clients to feel like they are the only client because in that moment, they are our only client. They are the only client that we're thinking about on their wedding day or at their engagement session or bridal session or rehearsal dinner. So even though it can be tempting to say, oh, at this wedding last weekend, or yes, we have a really busy season, we have so many weddings, do not do that. Instead, focus all of your effort and attention on directing your attention and your efforts back to that current client, including not talking about any other weddings. Another thing that we don't talk about on a wedding day is other vendors. We do not talk about other vendors. We do not say anything negative, even if things get a little crazy. Sometimes people get stressed out. Sometimes things go crazy. And instead of speaking poorly about that other vendor, we try to look for ways that we can help them or help the client to have a better experience. We would want someone to do that for us. And so what happens is that it not only creates a better experience, but it prevents the fact that maybe someone could overhear what you're saying, or maybe that vendor could overhear. And so it's just better to not say it at all. It's like the old rule. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And so we really keep that approach when it comes to speaking about other vendors or anyone else at the wedding. We just don't talk poorly about them, period. If you're having a disagreement with your team member, so Brad and I, my husband, we do shoot together. And as a husband, husband and wife team, sometimes we have differing opinions. But what we don't do is we don't argue. We'll speak kindly to one another and we make sure that body language isn't a thing. We don't want somebody looking at us to think, oh wow, like they're arguing. We always want to look professional. One of the biggest compliments that I feel like we can receive is someone saying, I didn't even know you were married. I thought you were business partners. Because when it comes to a wedding day, we truly want to uphold that intense level of professionalism for the client. And most importantly, when it comes to those nuances around your disposition, have high energy. Wedding days are very long. It isn't strange to us to be shooting 10, 12 hours on a wedding day. We wanna keep our energy high, which means sometimes we're packing protein bars or sandwiches. We wanna keep upbeat and just let them know that we are so, so honored and overjoyed to be there for their event. Whether we're saying it or not, we want them to feel that we are excited to be there for their wedding day and so honored to have been chosen as their photographers. A few other quick tips, whether it's the bellman, the cleaning crew, the planner, the coordinator, whoever it is that you are interacting with, always uphold a level of respect, understanding, and kindness. Even if I'm working and even if it's super busy, if the wedding coordinator comes up to me, I put down my camera, I stop what I'm doing, and I pay attention to them. I want them to know that I'm listening, that I care about their job as well as mine, and I want to do a good job for them. And lastly, when things get uncomfortable, sometimes things don't work out the way you thought that they would or things happen unexpectedly. Even when things get uncomfortable, always hold a level of professionalism. What do I mean by that? I have had groomsmen try to kiss me. I have had a groomsman rip a hairband out of my hair. I have had someone be incredibly rude to me at a wedding, but it doesn't matter. I am there for the client. They hired us because they believe that we can do a good job for them. And so even when those things happen, I just ignore them. I uphold a level of professionalism and I move on. I encourage you to do the same because sometimes we run into those not great, uncomfortable situations, but we should always maintain our own level of professionalism in that situation. Next, we're gonna talk about emotional awareness. This is one of those subtleties when it comes to wedding photography that make a huge difference. For example, in the South, it's hot. Everyone <laughs> feels the heat and occasionally people have passed out at weddings. Maybe they're kneeling too long in the church or maybe the bride's wearing a dress that's really warm. I have witnessed a lot of people pass out in my career. When that happens, what do you do? Don't draw attention to it. 
don't make a fuss out of it. Definitely don't photograph it. Instead, look for ways that you can help. Go find the church coordinator, get them a glass of water. In those situations, it's better to be a person than it is to be a photographer. And I truly believe that they will see and appreciate that more than an image of that scenario. If the client feels overwhelmed, for example, maybe they're very emotional or they feel like there's too much, observe that. We're literally six feet from them on the entire wedding day and step out of the room. It's okay to give the client a break and it's also okay to shoot more if you feel like they want that. Having that emotional awareness will make you so much better at your job and will keep your client happy. Maybe they lost a parent or maybe someone very close to them passed away and they're having an emotional moment. Don't interrupt. Take a step back. Maybe you do document that moment, but you want to uphold that high level of respect and understanding and emotional empathy for them in those moments. Next tip is going to be under promise and over deliver clients pay attention. If you told them that it's a six week turnaround, you make sure that you have those images to them in six weeks or sooner. If you promise them a complimentary hour of coverage, don't leave 15 minutes early. Whatever you say to the client, make sure that you're always following through on your word. Oftentimes clients ask for sneak peeks. They want a sneak peek by Monday. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Even if you're tired, even if you feel like, oh my gosh, that's one more thing. If you've promised it to them, go ahead and follow through. And if you don't feel like it's something that you can do, then don't promise it in the first place. Every now and then an emergency arises and something comes up. I'm a new mom and lately I've noticed that life is unpredictable with a child. When those unexpected situations come up, it's very important to be apologetic, offer the situation, but also give them a solution. Tell them, hey, this is what's going on, but this is how I'm going to make it right for you. So before you ever go to them with your problems or whatever's happening on in your life, you want to have something worked out for them so that that transition into this new situation or new circumstance is smooth and that they are taken care of. If you think of anything that you're going to take away from this video, the big overriding idea is that you want to take care of your clients. And the last big topic that we're going to talk about is consistency and following through. You are a brand. You are also a business and everything you do builds up that business brand. So whether it's your image editing, how you dress, how you speak, what you're putting out on social, be consistent. If you have a client that you're working with who refers you to a friend, they're going to expect that you deliver images that have a similar aesthetic, a similar editing style. Also, when a wedding planner refers you, they are going to expect that you are creating a consistent result. If you dress very professionally for one wedding, make sure you dress very professionally for the next wedding. This is going to be very interesting, but I had someone that I mentored years ago say that they were staying two hours past their contracted time. And when I asked them why they were doing that, they said it was because they cared. But what I said to them, which may sound like a little bit of a devil's advocate comment was that if you really cared, you would have stuck to the contract. The reason why is because you want to be fair to every single client. And unless she's staying two hours for every single client, then you shouldn't do for one that you don't do for the other. Now, if going above and beyond for her means staying the two extra hours, that's amazing, especially if she is doing it for everyone. But I just wanted to really drive home that point that you want to be consistent for all of your clients across the board in terms of your system, your images and everything you do in the brand. I hope these key touch points allow you to create that high touch level of luxury for your clients moving forward. Elevating your client experience is one of the best ways to grow quickly in your business and to get amazing ideal clients booking you for your services. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you find yourself still wondering about how to create that luxury experience for your wedding photography, I invite you to join my group experience at the link below. Inside this group, you'll have the opportunity to work with me alongside other photographers photographers in the space. There in the community, we create plans and strategies to help you elevate your business and grow so that you can begin to bring in more of your ideal client and photograph the weddings of your dreams. Click on the link in the description box if you're interested in learning more and I look forward to seeing you on the inside.